I'm going to talk about what happened when you get to Spain. And previously, previously, I talked about how to follow your passion, how to follow your dream, and plan and quit. Yeah! I'm doing a series about how to follow your passions and romance and culture shock, uh, lifestyle in Spain and flamenco and the reality of living a uh, dream lifestyle. So if you want to know about it, if you're interested, make sure that you subscribe my channel and I'm also teaching, I'm also showing and sharing um, how to dance flamenco. So, shall we start? Shall we start this way? Because we have space. Today, I divided into three parts. First, I'm gonna talk about the flamenco class with Juana Amadio. And second, I'm going to talk about lifestyle in Spain. And third, I'm going to talk about different culture, cultural shock or Spanish culture. Reason I'm doing this is the, the not many people share about it and if for example if you're thinking about going to Spain or if you want to get to know Spanish people or Spanish culture or flamenco if you get information and prepare mentally you will not you know feel like what is this? What like you know I feel bad or something like that because um, it's quite common that people get to people face um, a culture shock because I used to live in a um, few places, several places and also people who used to come to Japan and um, of course they love the country, they love Spain, they love Japan and they, they went and they came and um, Sometimes it's difficult to understand the culture and some people left and I was almost really close to leave Spain. The number one, the one amateur, the class is one amateur was fantastic. She is one of the best flamenco dancer and she's gypsy and she's elegant and her footwork is like Oh my god, so I was in the class and I was doing this but like almost like you know looking at her and watching her and I was satisfied and I couldn't do anything anything but really nothing I was learning, I learned flamenco in London for almost three years and I was like in the media level but in Spain it was like a principal it's the beginners, beginners and intermediate so I fell after the class I was like this you know every time I finished because it was super difficult and I thought I knew something and I didn't know anything that's how I felt I thought I knew something and you know what Asami you don't know nothing you don't know anything and I, I reminded the words that people say, the people, people, friends, and even the teacher. Um, you know, a lot of people go to Spain, but you realize when you get there, you are not good enough. Or you should be doing it, you know, you should be starting dancing when, since you are young. Or it's maybe true that, you know, people say that it's got to be a Spanish people, or it's got to be, you know, you don't have the levels you're not gonna make it you will come back and a lot of people come back so that's why I'm telling you I remember that kind of words and I was so so sad and despite of like you know the feeling feeling the you know frustrated sad and lonely because I didn't have uh, many friends back then when I started so um, I kept dancing I kept practicing practice on my own every day that was fantastic because I wanted to dance every day so in the morning I used to um, practice I used to go to sometimes I used to practice before and I go to went to the class and um, then in the afternoon practice on my own it's sometimes the procedure procedures is not like effectively like and you get outcome you know and especially in flamenco because it's not easy. It's 
everything doing a different things. You do this, you know, hand movements, and you do this foot, this difficult footwork, and you have to understand the kante, no singers, and the language if it's possible, if it's possible. Honestly, that's too much. So, um, if you are feeling like this, my advice is to think, take it easy and it will get there. You will get there if you don't give up. Everyone goes through a little by little goes up and it's like life. Um, flamenco is a living um art form so people say and it is so i um, think as life do you know about life have you got the certification about life uh, just don't give up just stay there and if you dm me direct messages or oh, like comments we share how we feel and we help each other okay um, when I came here, uh, I woke up in the morning and I went to the Fanamaja's classes, normally stay two or three hours. And then after that, I went straight away to practice every day, one to two, up to three hours. So I was really happy. I was really, really, you know, dancing every day. It was difficult and emotional and complicated and frustrated. I just, you know, practice, 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 and moving, moving, moving. And when you finish, when I finish, I had a lunch because lunch in Spain is around two o'clock, two to four. I think a siesta. I have to be really quiet. I do not disturb other people. It's like you know, after twelve o'clock in Spain. You know, like night time, so if you make noise, it, neighbor fruit will be, you know, angry. <laughs> the siesta as well, what, are, what kind of life I used to have, that's a dream life, right? Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, in Seville, there were a lot of like uh, um, fiesta, like students or like people, flamenco people, perform in many places, like a Peña. And I used to go there quite often, like check where flamenco are, right? And uh, yeah, when when then around twelve o'clock and one o'clock, it depends on the day, and you know, went back to went back home, and that's it. The, every day is like this, and the weekends, uh, it's like no school that you practice. I practice. <laughs> Difficult things about lifestyle, different, not difficult, but it's just the different things about lifestyle in Spain is the lunchtime and the dinner. Lunchtime is fairly important in Spain and uh, you have it with the family, like if you're working around, you know, working somewhere, you the, the people come back to, you know, your house and eat together. So this is how much people think that lunchtime, lunch is important. And the dinner is around nine o'clock. So I didn't get used to, uh, maybe for like, you know, after three or four, five years, I can't remember, but it took quite a long time for me to get used to it. Number three, so this is the last thing that we are going to talk about, but it's really important because not many people share and not many people give you advice or tips or like, you know, you can prepare what, what could you do when things happen like that? Or are you going to feel sad or feel bad or feel offended sometimes because the culture is different, you know, it's just the different things, but sometimes like, oh my God, I'm not used to this. And maybe they don't like me or maybe they're doing because I'm from Asia, <laughs> you know? Yes, the culture shock, the culture sh shock was people say, hasta mañana, hasta luego, nos vemos. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that really we are going to see. But since I'm Japanese, even though I used to live in uh, many, like, you know, I'm used to English culture and the New Zealand, you know, the other kind, kind of European cultures, like, okay, are we going to see each other tomorrow or later? And I, I was thinking, okay, then I have to go home and I have to get changed and like, I have to eat and I'm waiting and then 
didn't even text me. They didn't even text me or they... It's just they say, hasta luego, nos vemos, means in the future. It doesn't mean hasta mañana or hasta luego, I'll see you later. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't happen in England. I, when you say see you later, I'll see you tomorrow, we see tomorrow. So when people say you check um, or you just think or like you call or you make sure if you want to, are we going to see each other or, or, you know, so to make it clear. Because I'm from Japan and England and I used to, I used to do a banking and investment thing, investment job, the time is to, got to be perfect. You cannot be late any, any day. Anyway, nothing. So um, here, <laughs> it's not like that. So what are we supposed to do? Yeah, and people go, okay, see you later. And people don't come on time, maybe later, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, I can understand, but 15 minutes, or sometimes more. I used, uh, last week I went to um, do the boat with my son, and the person who was in charge said, I will call you guys in one hour. And uh, we were waiting, and we had enough, it was good, it was fantastic. And like, shall we go? Because we, I have to go, or we have to go and pick up uh, my daughter. And, and they didn't call us at all. And I was like, maybe they're having coffee or something like that, because it's like a kind of thing today. can't have said this. But my son said, you know what my son said? My son said, he said, Al mejor estaban tomando cerveza. I was like, not cerveza, but maybe café. And I saw exactly the same thing. So no, that's Spanish culture. They understand. Since that age, my my son is seven. So imagine, you know. So they don't feel offended or maybe feel like what is going on, like a confused or frustration. But for me was difficult to get used to it. Now I don't have any kind of program, I would say. Um, so hopefully this video, people who are watching this video, will have a great start if you're gonna come to Spain to live, or if you're gonna have a Spanish boyfriend, or if you're gonna have a Spanish friend so that you understand them. Okay, the next video is going to be, is going to be, a romance. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'm preparing to do a Zapate other project and some videos, videos, and videos and everything. So thank you for watching. I'm on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube.